In today's video, I'm going to be transforming our garage floor with the Rust-Oleum Rock Solid Garage Floor Coating Kit. So I have two of the two and a half car kits. I first got the regular gray and then Adam and I were talking and we decided we wanted to go with the dark gray. So I have to return that one. I do have another box of a single car garage out in the truck that I got to bring in, um, but I just want to take a look and see what's inside. So this is dark gray. So we have the instructions. I'll go through those in a minute. Uh, these look like the couch. It's double bag, I like that. There's a bit of risk of it breaking. Some people said that the pouch can actually burst and mix, but this doesn't feel like it did that. This still feels liquidy, so that's good. So one. Two of those pouches. Ooh, it's falling. Let me put that there. Um, and then this must be the acid etching. So two of those. And the chips. The other reason why we went with the dark gray as opposed to the regular, even if you can see that the chips have some blue in them. We didn't really want anything blue. So that's another reason why we went with this because you have just the black, white, and gray chips. You can also buy separate chips if you don't like the color that it came in. You can actually buy chips separately. So two of those bang. You know what? I think I'm missing something. I am. I am missing the two foam rollers. It did not come with the two foam rollers. Interesting. So somebody opened this box and took the foam rollers out and then returned it. Or they just took it out while they were in the store because they are definitely not in here. Well, that is a huge bummer. <sighs> Let me see if the foam rollers are in the other box. Ouch. Oh, yep, see? This one's definitely been open because do you see how all of this is in a bag together? It was not like that in this box. Somebody previously opened this box. So this has the two, ah, I'm losing my bag. It's falling. So this has the two foam rollers, the instructions, the chips. You see how these chips have blue? and the etching, and then it looks like the other bag is down here. Well, that is a huge bummer that somebody took the foam rollers out of this box. I'll have to open up the single car garage box and see if it has a foam roller in it. So definitely a piece of advice, if you are buying this in the store, this is not taped. I would just open it up real quick and make sure that it has everything in there before you leave the store. And if it doesn't, maybe bring it up to the front desk or something and have them, um, you know, hold on to it. Cause that's a real bummer. I paid $228 for this box, um, I believe. I'll have to double check the receipt. So to not have everything in it that it says is a real bummer. And that really sucks. Um, I did know that I was gonna have to purchase all of this stuff, which I already have, but now I gotta go get foam rollers. So first things first, prep is the most important thing when working with any of these epoxy garage floor kits. So the first thing I am going to be doing is vacuuming up the floor to get up all of the dirt and dust and debris that I can before I start cleaning, degreasing, scrubbing, and all of that other prep. Now that I have all the loose debris vacuumed up, I'm gonna start with degreasing the floor. I have no idea how this garage was used before, but there are tons of stains everywhere, so it definitely, I did not wanna skip this step. Um, I got the Rust-Oleum degreaser that I found right on the aisle. It was um, right with all of the other Rust-Oleum garage kit um, components, so I just figured I would use what they recommended, um, and I think it worked pretty well. I started by just pouring it on all of the stained spots or the, you know, the stuff that I didn't really know 
know what it was. And then I used this broom to scrub it all in. I periodically sprayed it down with more water to keep everything nice and wet while I was scrubbing and cleaning it um, before rinsing it all off in the end. This is a step you definitely don't want to skip when prepping your floors for paint or epoxy or anything like that because anything greasy, the paint's just not going to stick to it. So there is no point in doing all of this preparation and um, you know painting and all this hard work if it's just not going to stick in the end, so do not skip the step. I then took our power washer and power washed the floor. This was to help get up all of the extra soap or any of the other things that might have been stuck to the floor that I didn't get up with the brush. Again, just really wanted to make sure I did a nice, deep, thorough clean on this floor so that the epoxy paint sticks. I then squeegeed all of the excess water off the floor. I'm gonna let this floor dry overnight, but I wanna help speed up the process um, and make sure that it really is dry tomorrow when I come back to start the next step. So I just squeegeed all the excess water. All of the products and tools that I use for this project, I will put a link to down below in the description. Here is what the floor looked like after all of the cleaning and scrubbing and degreasing and letting it dry just a little bit. After letting the floor dry overnight, it was time to turn my attention towards filling all of these cracks. We've got some big ones and little ones. They're all cosmetic, not structural. I got this liquid cement crack filler and a metal putty knife to help smooth it on um, from the store. Rust-Oleum makes a crack filler and I saw it when I had originally gone to the store and I didn't buy it and I went back and they were out, of course. So the woman at the store helped me pick this out and actually I really like how easy this was to apply. You'll see in a minute, you just cut the top open and you basically just squirt it into the cracks. and then and I used the Medi metal <laughs> putty knife to help flatten it out. I'm sure it has some self-leveling properties to it, but my thought process was if I help it, you know, smooth it out a bit, my sanding process will be a lot easier the next day. And it kind of was. You see there, I forgot to take out the little <laughs> insert in the top. Oops. Um, but now we're good to go. You just squirt it on and then I used the putty knife to help smooth it in. I don't know what would have happened if I didn't smooth it. It did sink in in some of the larger cracks and I had to go back and do a second coat. Maybe if I hadn't flattened it with the putty knife, it would have self-leveled on its own. I'm not really sure, but I didn't have a whole lot of days to get this project done. This was done literally the week of us moving in and we needed to get the floor done and dry to the point where we can move on it, you know, so the movers can bring our stuff in. So I was trying to do whatever I could to help speed up the process. After letting the cement filler dry overnight, I came back the next day to sand it as smooth as possible. So we are now on day three of this project. And I think at this point we were moving in um, in two days. So we did not have a lot of time to get this done. Um, in the end, I will admit you can still see um, this crack filler underneath if you look really closely at the floor. I did not sand these probably as smooth as I probably should have, um, but honestly, I was just doing the best I can and not making it obvious, hoping that once we put all the chips on the top, you wouldn't notice it anyway. And I'm not gonna lie, I went a little crack filler crazy. It was very satisfying to squirt it on and smooth it out. So you can see I ended up filling out a lot of cracks and little chunks and divots in the garage. After all that was done, I was noticing there were a couple of spots that looked like they may still be grease. So I went back in a second time with a degreaser just on these couple of spots. Again, I was doing all of this prep work. I really wanted to make sure that the epoxy paint had the best chance at sticking and I did not want to be upset that I didn't take the extra couple minutes to clean those off. The final step in the preparation is etching the concrete floors. It's another part of, you know, deep cleaning. The etched, etching is like an acid and it eats away a little bit at the surface and it helps really make sure that the epoxy paint bonds really well to your concrete. So again, another step that you do not want to miss. I mixed the etching with the water according to the instructions on the package and they suggest working in small sections. So I divided my garage basically into four parts. So I started with this corner. 
um, you wet it down and then you pour the etching over top and then you use the brush to sort of scrub it in and make sure that it hits up all of those areas and you'll see here in a second I show you a close-up of what the etching looks like on the concrete you can actually see it sort of fizzing and bubbling a little bit and that's how you know it's working You wanna make sure that you rinse the etching off really, really well after you let it sit for the um, amount of time that it specifies in the directions because you wanna make sure that you wanna stop that chemical reaction. And then again, I'm gonna squeegee all the excess water off here again because we're gonna let the floor dry overnight again. Um, and I wanna make sure that it really is nice and dry because we only have the very next day to get this paint and epoxy on before we move in. So it has to be dry by tomorrow. The one thing that I wasn't really happy with, and I don't know if this could have been my error, but you'll see here some of this crack filler was starting to peel up a little bit. I don't know if I should have done the crack filler after the etching or if it was just because of this specific crack filler with the reaction to the etching. So I wasn't really happy with that, the fact that it was peeling up. Um, you can see on a lot of spots, some of it just like chunks came up and some of it was just edge was peeling. So I'm not really sure what I did wrong there or if it was product or user error, but this is what it looked like. And I just wanted to share that with you in case you experienced the same thing. We did make sure before we painted the epoxy on to go back and do a light sanding on all of the crack filler that was peeling up just so that we didn't have any issues. Um, so Adam was able to take some time off of work so that he could come over and help me finish up this project. Again, like I said, we only have one day to get this painted um, and completed so that it's dry in time for us to move in. So he's just taping off all of the baseboards so that when we paint on the epoxy, we um, have very little cleanup after the fact. Um, we're not really sure how thick this is gonna be and we just don't want it up on all of the trim we're going to be painting the garage um, down the road and you will see that in a future video I did want to quickly address the fact that we've got holes in our drywall. I hadn't mentioned that yet. We had a bunch of electrical work done. This garage only had one outlet and terrible lighting. So before we did this project, we had electricians in the house when they were doing some of their interior lighting. We had them add additional outlets and lighting in the garage and we will definitely repair all of that before we start painting. So the way these pouches work or the way the kit works, you roll one side into the other, it bursts in and then you shake it to mix it. Just follow the instructions. It's super easy to work with. I thought maybe bursting the pouch would be hard. It really wasn't. Um, and then you just mix it until it's thoroughly mixed. You know, I read online, legend has it that if you actually dance while mixing the pouch, it mixes better. <laughs> just kidding. Do you just want to do at first, just do like here and here so I can cut in real quick. You know, like just do like here and here and then I'll cut in real quick and then we can pour what you're going to roll. Oh, oh, that came out fast. Okay, go. <laughs> So that really was our game plan. Um, I took the big three inch brush and he poured it out and I would get in there and just make sure that it went all the way to the edge because with the roller, you really can't get to the edge. So they definitely recommend, um, you know, trimming it out like you would painting a wall and then using the roller to help spread it out. Now we had no idea how much this was actually gonna coat. Like I said, it was a two and a half car kit. I did buy a single car kit so that we would have extra and we just were not sure how far it was going to go. So we really were trying to err on the side of caution and spreading it out as thin as we possibly could. If we could get this whole two car garage done with the two and a half car kit, that would be amazing. I read a lot of things and watched a lot of videos of other YouTubers that were saying that they, Really, even though it says two and a half car, they needed like two kits or one and a half kits. And I really wanted to try to make this one work. In the end, this two and a half car kit was exactly enough. And you'll see here in a few minutes that we really, really stretched it all out and did not waste a drop. So we were able to return the single car kit. So the two and a half cars worked for our two car garage. There is no way this would have worked for a full two and a half car garage. I don't really know how they're getting their measurements, but definitely not. So my advice is have an extra single car kit on hand just in case, because what you don't want is to get all the way to the end and run out and you can always return it in the end. So it says to do it in the air and let them fall. So you want to like test? Yeah, but 
Vielleicht. Adam and I had a little bit of a disagreement over the chips. I really thought you should put a lot of chips down because then it would really hide all of the flaws in the floor. He really didn't want to do any chips. So we kind of compromised and I let him, you know, throw and do as many as he wanted. Really, at the end, it's his garage mainly. mainly. Um, and he didn't want to have an overly abundant amount of chips. So he did it very modestly. But you can do as much or as little as you want. And I think I had mentioned earlier, you can always buy more. If you don't have enough chips, you can always buy additional chips if you want to have it be really, really, um, you know, nice and full. If you've got, let's say, a really uneven floor or even if you just like that look, it's really up to you. So once we got the hang of it in that first little corner, we just kept moving down the line in small sections, making sure not to go too far um, that we could still throw the chips out and get that sort of evenly. You don't want to go too big of a spot before you do that. Um, and you don't want it to dry, obviously, because you want them to still um, stick to it. You have about a 45 minute working time, it said on the instructions, once you burst and mix the pouch. And I, not gonna lie, we were a little worried about that time frame, but it rolls on really easily and really quickly. So we did not have any issues with any of it drying before we had a chance to spread it around and put the chips on and complete the entire garage. So we followed the directions and worked in small sections so that we could get the chips all thrown evenly throughout. And then we kind of were flip-flopping back and forth, taking turns, edging, rolling, throwing the chips. Well, he mainly threw the chips. <laughs> um, but we just really tried to work in small sections. Now, at this point, we had realized that we had used up almost the entire first pouch, and it does not look like we did that much of the garage. We're thinking maybe that's like a third of the garage. So we ended up having to open up the second pouch here. Um, so I guess maybe we were going too thick in the beginning but you will see in the end that even though that first pouch only did a third of that garage we somehow stretched this pouch the second one to do the last two-thirds of the garage um, I think we went back and poured out every drop from the first bag and we used every single drop from this bag as well um, in order to coat the entire garage Now here's something that didn't really work out that well. You'll see I blue taped the edge of the garage. We decided to paint the epoxy down the front ledge. We have like a little like two inch lip um, where the garage is so water doesn't get in. And I, I taped it with a blue tape with hopes we'd get a crisp line, but the concrete just really was not even. So once we pulled up the tape, a lot of it had seeped under. We're gonna have to go back just maybe with an exterior paint and just hand paint a straight line because it does drive me a little crazy. Uh, but just keep that in mind that depending on your surface and what you're taping, it may not you know, work out that well. You may just have to do the edge by hand. Um, either way, we were just trying to stop the epoxy at a certain point so that it wouldn't go um, to the exterior, trying to keep it all on the inside of the garage. So here is when we both start to get concerned about whether or not we're gonna to have to open up that single car kit. We're still working off the second pouch here with the two and a half kit. And you can see here, we don't have a lot of garage space left. And there was a part of me that just was determined to not open a whole nother pouch for such a small little section. Cause then I just felt like it was gonna be a huge waste. So we were absolutely determined to get every drop out of each of these bags and complete this part of the garage without opening up that other kit. 
<laughs> Why can't you work? And we did it! There you have it, the two and a half car garage kit covered our two car garage. Oh, I promised her we could get her. And I had to go get what is arguably the cutest assistant in the world to come help us wrap up this project. She had been asking all day if she could help throw the little paint chips. So we definitely didn't want to forget doing that before it all dried. You want to throw on a little bit of chips? Here, I'll take this. Woo! Want to do one more? Let's take a look at what our garage floor looked like when I got this project started earlier in the week. And this is what it looks like now. It looks like a whole new floor. I cannot believe it. And a lot of these after shots I took while it was still wet, but I have to tell you, it looked exactly the same dry. We came back the next day and were afraid to walk on it because we thought it was still wet and it was not. It was fully cured within 24 hours, despite the heat and humidity that we had been experiencing down here in Georgia. When we did this project, it came out beautiful. So if you look closely, yes, there are some spots that you can still see some of the edge filling in and I don't know if it was grease or whatnot that the the epoxy paint sort of absorbed in but overall it is just really gorgeous like a whole brand new floor i do not feel disgusted walking around you know on bare feet in this garage we can sweep it up really easy the only other suggestion i have if you're going to work on this project is i would add the slip resistant additive we did not and anytime we walk through our garage when it's raining and we use our garage a lot instead of our front door we do slip um, it can be very slippery so i definitely recommend in the future putting that additive so that it's not so slippery but we just love how it came out